We really are lucky that some of the animals that we share this planet with are able to help us out. Some animals technically have jobs, and they work for us not for money, but instead for our love, care and affection. The most common examples of this are of course service animals, and also animals in the police force and in the army. These animals are usually treated very well, but this isn't the case for all animals that have jobs. Animals that work for humans don't exactly get paid, and this means that instead of having a job, in some cases they're almost slaves. Sometimes animals are forced into labour, simply because it's much cheaper than hiring humans. In other cases, animals work for humans because they have special skills and are simply able to do things that we can't. In this video I will be covering most of these topics, as I will be going through four skilled animals that have jobs. Our first animal is unsurprisingly a domesticated animal, and to find it we can head to pretty much anywhere around the world, as we have the pigs. Pigs are often misunderstood creatures, and are actually surprisingly intelligent. Although they have wild relatives, there are now hundreds of domesticated breeds. Our history with pigs dates back thousands of years, and we've actually domesticated them twice, in two different places. The first time was in what is now modern day Turkey, and happened around 10,000 years ago. The second time was in China's Mekong Valley, around 8,000 years ago. Pigs are known for their strange snouts, and these snouts are actually very useful adaptations. They are of course used to sniff and find food, but they are also used to dig and unearth potential meals. This is exactly why we have hired them, because their snouts are able to root out truffles. Now a truffle is a fruiting body of a fungus, and is predominantly one in the tuba genus. These truffles may look very underwhelming, but they demand a very high price. Their price completely depends on what species it is, but some can go for over $3,000 a kilogram. These truffles are used in cooking, and the taste is described as earthy and even gamey. Because they demand such a high price, it's a good idea to try and find them, and these pigs seem more than happy to help. Pigs that help find truffles are known as truffle hogs, and are used in the temperate forests of both Europe and North America. This practice dates all the way back to the Roman Empire, and still survives to this day. For the most part, these pigs seem to be treated very well, and get praise and treats for finding truffles. Because they can cause damage to truffles while digging for them, they have been banned in some areas, and in these areas dogs tend to take over the job. So whether you like truffles or not, you can appreciate the skills of a truffle hog. But for our next species, we can once again head to pretty much anywhere around the world, as we have the cormorants. Now there are around 40 species of cormorant alive today, with the largest being Brant's cormorant, and the smallest being the aptly named little cormorant. These birds are of course aquatic birds, and are very efficient fish hunters. Some have completely ditched the skies altogether, and spend all their life on land and in the water. This is definitely the case for the aptly named flightless cormorant, because its tiny stubby wings are only useful in the water. Our relationship with these birds can sometimes be quite fiery. Because they feed on fish, they can come into conflict with humans, because they're more than happy to feed on pond fish, as well as fish in stocked lakes. They rival even penguins when it comes to catching fish underwater, and of course us humans have taken advantage of this ability. Now unlike the relationship between truffle hogs and humans, the relationship between working cormorants and humans is slightly less harmonious, as well as being trained to work for humans, they are also pretty much forced to. The practice dates back thousands of years, and originates in China and Japan. The fishermen would go out onto large rivers with their cormorants, and then urge them to jump in. These birds would then catch some fish and eat them, but they were unable to eat all of them. You see, before these birds were allowed into the water, they would have some string tied around their neck. This meant that they could only swallow small fish, and they would come to the surface with the much larger ones. The fishermen would then take these large fish off the birds, and then keep them for themselves. This may not seem completely fair, but at least the cormorants got to keep some of the smaller fish. This form of fishing was once a successful enterprise, but it's mostly been phased out today. Its primary use is to serve the tourism industry, because modern destructive methods are simply far more effective. And I think most cormorants alive today will be very happy that this method is only mostly seen in the history books. But for our next species, we will be heading to Southeast Asia, as we have the pigtailed macaques. Originally, there was thought to be only one species of pigtailed macaque, but today there is two recognized sister species. These are both the northern pigtailed macaque and the southern pigtailed macaque. These two species can look quite similar to each other, but have slight differences in appearance and also in behavior. Now both of these primates are mostly found in hilly rainforests, where they gorge themselves on a diet of mostly fruit. They will also supplement this diet with meatier meals, but they are most at home looking for fruit in the trees. 
The two species of pigtailed macaque are listed as vulnerable and endangered. This is because they're facing many threats in the wild, with deforestation being one of their main problems. Another one of their problems is being forced to work for humans, because unfortunately this macaque's job is very controversial. These monkeys definitely fall in the slave category, because there's evidence that they are not treated very well at all and in some cases are even taken from the wild. In some parts of Southeast Asia, these primates are used to collect coconuts, simply because they're so agile in the trees. One of these monkeys can collect up to a thousand coconuts per day, and it's thought that a human can only collect 80. This is why it may seem like a good idea to employ these monkeys, but the truth is most of them are treated very badly. They are often chained up and forced to work, and in many cases they fear their captors. Because they are not paid and chained up, they are treated like coconut picking machines, and simply have no choice in the matter. In some cases, the schools in which they train these monkeys are actually used as tourist attractions. It may seem like these macaques are having fun at first, but they really are abused. In some cases, these monkeys even have their canine teeth pulled out, just so that they can't bite their handlers. If this was just on a small scale, it would still be a big problem, but these monkeys are actually used by many big companies. These companies did supply many supermarkets in the UK, but because of the backlash, Supermarkets such as Waitrose, Ocado and Co-op all vowed to stop selling their goods. This really is a horrible way to treat an animal that we're so closely related to, and I really hope this practice dies out soon. But from a sad story, we'll move to a very happy one, and we will be heading over to Africa, as we have the Gambian Pouched Rat. Now this species is also known as the African Giant Rat, and it is a very large species. They can measure almost 90 centimeters from their nose to the tip of their tail, and can weigh over a kilogram. This larger size means that they need to get through a lot of food, and will eat anything from fruits to crabs. To find this prey they don't rely on their eyesight, because this is famously very poor, but instead they rely on their smell and their hearing. These rats are employed by humans because of their smell, as they are able to sniff out landmines. In special training facilities in Africa, these rats are trained to detect chemical compounds within explosives. They are of course rewarded with treats, and these rats really have turned into lifesavers. These rodents are so effective at finding landmines that they're actually shipped all over the world. One of these places is Cambodia, which does have a real problem with landmines. They were of course laid here in the decades long war, which involved Cambodia, Vietnam and of course the US. Most of these mines weren't cleared, and especially in rural areas, there are still lots of amputations. That's why these rats are really needed, as they're able to come in and clear large areas of land. There is one very famous pouched rat called Magawa, who sniffed out over a hundred landmines. He was given a gold medal for his bravery, and his simply life-saving work. He cleared the equivalent of 20 football pitches, and after living a very long life, he peacefully passed away in January of this year. And thanks to rats like Magawa, the rural areas of Cambodia are now slightly more safe. If you think you know of any other animals that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.